Hi, welcome to Nokri Learning. My name is Kanika Garg and I've been working on artificial intelligence and machine learning for past eight years. Today, we are going to discuss about emotion recognition using deep learning method. These are the topics that I'm going to discuss today. First, we'll talk about the ResNet 50, that is a deep learning network, or we say that a convolutional neural network that we are going to use today. Then we are going to use FER dataset, which is a very famous dataset for uh, facial emotion recognition, that is uh, FER. Then what are the requirements that we have to perform or to do this coding part today and the various recommended courses if you want to learn further. Now, what exactly ResNet 50 is, okay? So ResNet 50 is basically a convolutional neural network that is 50 layers deep. That is why there is the term 50 associated with ResNet. So what we can do is uh, we can uh, load a pre-trained version of the network and then we can just use it using the current database or the images we have. So basically it's a pre-trained model on the ImageNet database. And what exactly ImageNet database is? ImageNet database is a database of various images. It's, it consists of millions of images of around thousand object categories. Okay. So that means the pre-trained network can classify images into a uh, thousand different object categories that could be keyboard, mouse, pencil, animals, humans. So as a result, the network has learned rich feature representations uh, for a wide range of images. And the network has an image input of 224 by 224. Okay, 224 by 224. So ResNet is one of the ideal network to experiment with and to learn how to perform emotion recognition using deep learning model. Okay. Now let's talk a little about the data set. Now, uh, this data set is an open source data sets, uh, data set which is hosted or available at Kegel. And this is the link available here. It has the face images uh, of humans for seven emotions that are anger, disgust, fear, happy, sad, and surprise neutral. Okay. So it has seven classes. So it has a total of around 28,000 uh, examples, which are segregated in different folders for training and testing among these seven classes. So for example, angry folder contains pics of angry faces and so on. All right. The pixel size or the image size we say for this data set is 48 by 48 pixels. All right. Moving further, what are the requirements? Uh, of course, we need Python. Then we need computer vision because we are going to uh, analyze the image for that part. We need computer vision library CV2. Then again, we need the data set and the deep learning model. Yeah. Okay, using ResNet 50, if you want to experiment with some, some uh, thing else, you can uh, of course go ahead. And for the coding part, you can either use Google Colab or can use the Kaggle notebook. Uh, notebook. Today, I'm going to use the Kaggle notebook. Uh, why I always recommend using Colab or Kaggle notebook is just because it gives you the Jupyter environment first, and also it provides you with the inbuilt Jupyter, virtual Jupyter, uh, GPUs, sorry. So it will not slow down your machine. The GPUs will run virtually online. So you just need the internet connection and it's good to go. All right. So, okay. Let's code. Now this is <clears throat> how the Kaggle notebook look like. This is more like the Google Collab only. You can just see here is the option to run your cell and these are normal uh, to add new thing, to delete, to cut the cell, to copy a cell, 
run all the cells together or run one by uh, one cell one by one that is everything now here this is the sign where you can load your data you can just go here and add data and you can just search for this fer 2013 is the full name i have already loaded it you can just go from here and you need not to download even you just have to go and add your data from the kegel itself and it will get added here all right so if you want to see the structure how the data i got is is this like test and train data and the train is then divided into seven different classes similarly test is divided into seven different classes okay now this code is already been run because i want to save my time uh, it takes a lot of time for the computation to perform. So these are the various libraries that uh, we are going to use today. That is uh, Pandas, NumPy, of course, then TensorFlow, because whenever we want to run any deep learning model, we, of course, need TensorFlow and Keras these days, then computer vision, because we are working on the images and pixels, then matplotlib to plot the graph if we want to, maybe and may not be. Now, this is the path of our training and the testing data. And if I want to see the length, the number of directories we have, because I have listed here, there's a list directory. <clears throat> so we can see both has seven folders. Now, just to see uh, a random image, and I've passed the name of the image, and I just want to see how it does it look like. It looks like, like this. So this is 48 by 48 uh, pixels image. All right. Now, what I want to do is, I am uh, basically using image data generator. What exactly doing is, it is just fetching all the images and creating a data generator for training and the validation. And then what we'll do is, we are using, we will be using flow from directory that will help us. Uh, create a structure or a say batches, various batches for our training data and the validation or the testing data so that we can pass it to our model. All right. So we have just used flow from directory and I've passed our training directory. My target size is of course 48 by 48. We have chosen a batch size of 100. If you want, you can choose or try with another batch size, our class mode is categorical because we are classifying it, it into various classes. And I have mentioned here RGB, okay? If you have the color modes, uh, if it is not RGB, you can use it for the black and white pictures also, okay? Similarly for validation data. Now I am using ResNet 50 as my base model. What am I going to do is I'm using ResNet 50 as the base model and then we'll add some more layers according to my need. Because ResNet 50 has been trained on some images, some million images. So what I can do is I can just use it as it is and further add upon my further uh, layers so that it can learn more about the images I want it to learn. Okay. So our base model is ResNet 50. And what we, what we will do further is we will just keep on adding some of the layers to this base model. So to add the layers, we have a dense layer, a dropout layer, then convolutional layer and the max pooling layer, right? These are the kind of layers that we have in any convolutional neural network. So first of all, we define our model as sequential. Why? Because it's a sequential model. It will go in a sequence. And every almost every CNN model is a sequential model. Then we add our base model to as the first part of the model. Then we add two convolutional layers. All right. Now, if you see the filters I have mentioned as 32 and 64. Now, you can experiment with these parameters now. So. Here you can try with different parameters and can just see how it will work out for you. All right, that is why it is kind of uh, always a little experimenting with the deep learning uh, neural networks. Then for the activation function, we are uh, using ReLU. ReLU is uh, basically a um, rectify, uh, rectified linear unit. And then you can for padding use the same. 
all right and then you have mentioned the input shape similarly then again the convolutional neural uh, convolutional layer then we have a max pooling layer so max pooling what exactly it is doing is it is uh, taking the largest element from the rectified feature map and down samples it so convolutional layer is creating a feature map and then max pooling is down sampling it okay then we are adding a dropout layer dropout is a simple and a powerful say regularization technique for neural networks and deep learning models a good value of dropout in a hidden layer is between say 0 to 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 to 0 point that depends on your need then again these are always uh, comes in various batches the uh, convolutional layer there's the max pooling there's the dropout then again convolutional max pooling convolutional max pooling and dropout that that is how the training happens okay so these are all the layers that we have added now what exactly dense layer is dense is the only actual network layer in the model dense basically uh, means fully connected layer it feeds all outputs from the previous layer to all its neurons and each neuron provide one output to the next layer. Okay, so if I'm mentioning dense 1024, that means it has 1024 neurons. And the last layer must always have the value of the actual classes. Now I have seven actual classes here, seven emotions. So the dense layer has seven value here. That means it has seven neurons. Fine. After uh making all these layers we have to compile our model to compile our model i am using uh categorical uh, cross entropy <laughs> for calculating the loss because it computes the uh cross entropy between uh, cross entropy loss between labels and predictions so cross entropy loss function is used when there are two or more label classes or say the categorical classes then optimizer is one of the arguments required for compiling a Keras model. In this, we are using the Adam optimizer. And if you can just see, we are using a learning rate of 0.001. Here, you can again experiment with the various values and see how it will work out for you. Now, we have used a uh, callback function. What exactly callback function is? It, uh, a callback fu function is a function that uh, is repeatedly called during a process. Now, what it is saying is if our logs get the accuracy of 0.99, okay, that means we have to stop the training. That means it is almost near to 100%. And we say that the model has reached amazing accuracy. So, because we need some place for that model to be stopped, like we used to do in recursion, you know, we always have a stopping criteria to, uh, to stop it. Then finally, we'll fit the model. Now, if you can see, I just have used 10 epochs because it was taking a huge time. So if you can just see with the 10 epochs, it has taken the accuracy of 0 0.48, which is of course very bad. But if you go around like maybe uh, 50 or 100 epochs, the accuracy will definitely improve. Now, uh, it of course takes a lot of time. So as soon as your training gets complete, what you can do is you can just take the validation data generation gen, uh, generated values in X and Y and just pass it to your model to evaluate the results. So you'll get the results. And then from the results, you can actually always get the accuracy, validation accuracy, loss, and the validation loss. You can just run it and just find out the accuracies and the loss your model has. Since I have not performed much of the uh, epochs here and the accuracy is right now very low. So whenever you perform this, just try to use the epochs uh, approximately 50 or at least 100 to realize the actual potential this algorithm has. So this is how, this is basically a basic understanding of how you can implement uh, a deep learning model for emotion detection. All right. So
these are some uh, recommended courses you can go through if you want to learn more about uh, the open cv or maybe the image recognition so of course you must have a deep understanding of computer vision to understand the image basics for face detection and anything like that and open cv is the best thing to start with so the courses that are available are on generally the Coursera and Great Learning. So you can just go ahead and take a look on these courses available. And uh, finally, thank you. And if you really like the video, please like, share and subscribe Nokri Learning. Thank you.